Welcome back to a brand new episode of the Uia podcast. I am your host, Elle Edwards, founder of Uia and the Blue House. And today's episode is building upon a conversation that started in my local church, has been something that's been going on for a little while. It's this idea of the world getting better and better, the kingdom expanding. The context for that, before we dig into why you might be rolling your eyes right now, (laughs) the context for that starts in Daniel uh, chapter 2. So a bit of background to this, Daniel uh, was in in uh, Babylon in Nebuchadnezzar's palace and Nebuchadnezzar had a dream uh, and he insisted that his his royal people not his royal people his wise people tell him the dream and what it meant and his um, folks said well tell us the dream and we'll tell you what it means he's like no no you must tell me the dream and tell me what it means and like you're crazy dude <laughs> uh, I'm paraphrasing obviously uh, you're crazy nobody could do that ah but we know a guy called Daniel we know a man who can <laughs> and so Daniel Daniel said, no, no man can do this, but God can do it. And so Daniel proceeded to tell Nebuchadnezzar his dream and then told him what he meant, what it meant. Uh, and it, it was the dream that talks about statues. There was um, a great big statue, and there was a gold and there was a silver and there's, it gradually, it was meant to represent Nebuchadnezzar's kingdom and the ones, the Mer- Medes and the Persians and, and so on and so forth until there was a final, final um, uh, a p- a kingdom that was made up of two parts and it was meant to represent the, the Romans and the Jewish empires at the time. Anyway, to into that then um, is verse 44 of chapter 2. In the time of those kings, where you had the Jews and the, and the Romans in conflict, the God of heaven will set up a kingdom that will never be destroyed, nor will it be left to another people. It will crush all those kingdoms and bring them to an end, but it will itself endure forever now Daniel wouldn't have known whilst he obviously explained the dream Daniel didn't know about Jesus per se we get the opportunity to read these stories you know living as we do this side of of Jesus and everything that happened from that but that kingdom that will never end tying into that one of our favorite uh, Christmassy uh, prophecies from Isaiah this is Isaiah chapter 9 Uh, verses six and seven for unto us a child is born for to us a son is given and the government will be on his shoulders he will be called wonderful counselor mighty god everlasting father prince of peace of the greatness of his government and peace there will be no end he will reign on david's throne and over his kingdom establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever the zeal of the lord almighty will accomplish this now This is a conversation that's been going on a little bit behind the scenes. I've had it with various people. This idea of, well, if God, you know, Jesus said when he came, the kingdom is here. John the Baptist before him said the kingdom is almost here. (laughs) Jesus came, the kingdom is here. And we are now walking the reality of that out. And so you might look around you and go, "Mm, it doesn't really feel like it right now. Maybe you've been buying into this idea that there's doom and gloom and the world is getting worse and worse. Today's episode is for you. We're here to encourage you that actually it's not getting worse and worse. And also an added insight. This was literally something that God and I were exploring yesterday and today. Is what about, what if this this kingdom that is going to never end, this kingdom that is expanding, is founded on God's love? which it is. Jesus is the exact representation uh, of God. In fact, I'm going to read that to you later, but I'll read it to you now. This is Hebrews um, chapter 1, verses 1 to 3. In the past, God spoke to our... our, Let's start again. (laughs) In the past, God spoke to our ancestors through the prophets at many times and in various ways. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by his son, whom he anointed who he appointed heir of all things and through whom also he made the universe. The sun is the, is the radiance of God's glory and the exact representation of his being, sustaining all things by his powerful word. After he had provided purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty in heaven. So when you see Jesus, you see God. Throughout history, throughout Bible history, but also the history of the planet, of the world. Um, That's not even a proper sentence, but we're going to keep going with it. Throughout history, we, ever since the fall, you know, Adam and Eve and God, they walked in relationship. They knew God. They saw him face to face. They walked with him in the cool of the day and all of that wonderful, glorious stuff. Then, of course, we had the fall. It's described by William Paul Young as Adam's turning. And suddenly, our picture of God 
It's like if you turn away and then it's a shadow. Suddenly our picture of God has been infected. It has been been skewed. And so from that moment on, we have this story of God's love redeeming the situation, but actually new expressions and new understandings of God's love. So there was a conversation that I had uh, earlier on in the year with God. I was like, okay, because I, for the, a number of years now, I've been sharing that, you know, yes, we've heard historically about how cross God is, but actually God is love and that's what we're waking up to. And I was I was pondering with him, well, why are we why are we here? Why have we got this now? Why is it that, you know, it feels like new revelation? And this tied in with with the conversation that's come, that's come in today, where actually all of history is an increasing revelation of God as he actually wants to be known by you. So what if this idea that I put to you that the world is getting better and better, it doesn't actually depend upon ex- external circumstances around you. I would maintain that actually, yes, whilst there are challenges at this po- po- moment in history, it's definitely less challenging than it was 30 years ago is less challenging than it was 100 years ago it's less challenging than it was 300 years ago you know there is we are as as a civilization we are advancing even though we haven't got it right yet we are advancing so actually i would maintain the world is getting better and better but i know i have family members who are like no nah, i don't agree with you there l i'm not saying it's getting worse but it's not getting better okay that's fine you don't have to agree with that but what i want to put to you today is actually maybe because this was a, a, a new thing I was exploring with God. And many of you know, particularly folks in the Blue House, the way we do life is, hey, there's this thing I'm exploring with God. Do you want to come and explore it too? I was exploring with, the, with God the idea that maybe it's our understanding of and our ability to receive God's love that is getting better and better. And so actually we're coming to realise that, you know, God is love. Every good thing that we see, you know, Jesus, Jesus is God. Jesus is key and it's not an accident that we're having this conversation now as we're getting ready for Christmas and celebrating the arrival of Jesus. There's an article in Christianity Today, I don't know if it was written today or yesterday, but it popped up, I follow their Telegram channel and it's talking about is Europe post-Christian or pre-revival and it was was quite an encouraging article but actually I was reflecting on the fact that we, not just in Europe, but globally, whilst people might not be identifying with the label Christian, what if they are waking up to love? There are people who are seeking spiritual experiences. What that really is, is that part of them that is aching to be in connection with love, with God, is exploring what does that look like? They are dissatisfied and not content with the stories that they've been told about God. You know, we we read in the Old Testament lots of expressions of a very angry God. I had a, a really fun and challenging podcast interview on Sunday with a gentleman who does not it does not agree that God is love. How can God be love when there's all this awful stuff happening in the Old Testament? For me, God is love. And so if I read something in the Bible that is not an expression of love, there's got to be something else going on here that I don't understand. And quite transparently, I feel like I've only just started digging into the, okay, so what's actually going on here? Part of this conversation. Uh, There's a book I've been reading and I didn't know I was going to mention this, but there's a guy called Bradley I'm going to say Bradley Jersak, but I'm actually going to probably tell you his name wrong. He wrote this book, he wrote a book called A More Christ-Like Word. I'm only 20, I'm, I'm, as I'm speaking to you, I'm trying to, trying to find the name of the book at the same time. So forgive me for people watching, you'll see me looking down, that's the reason why. Because uh, I want to make sure I get the name right. Um, but he wrote a book called uh, A More Christ-Like Word. And I'm only 20% of the way through this book at the moment. But it is quite transparently making me go ooh (laughs) in a good way because we don't have to we are not the same people today that we were a week ago or five years ago or ten years ago and actually what if we are growing in our understanding of how God wants to be known by us that's a beautiful thing I have found that this book now so let me actually tell you what his name is in case you'd like to read it Bradley Jersak J-E-R-S-A-K. But if you just search on Amazon Amazon for a more Christ-like word, it's actually inviting us to explore the Bible 
the way the early church would have read it, reading the scriptures, specifically what we call the Old Testament, reading the Hebrew scripture, scriptures in a way that the early church would have read it. Because there is a glorious quote, uh, which I came across yesterday. Uh, and, and I, again, it's in my notes. I didn't realize I was going to be sharing this with you. This was a, this is a quote from um, Origen in the year, in the 200s AD. He says, Father is absolutely Christ-like. If you read a text about God that does not portray him in a Christ-like fashion and you take it literally, you create an idol and commit a monstrous blasphemy. And similarly, Philo, Philo of Alexandria, who was 17 years old when Jesus was born, so he's that kind of era. Before you open the scrolls, you must have a preconceived conviction that God is good and only good. If you come upon a scripture that is not worthy of representing the nature of God, you must read it as an allegory and search to discover the mystery hidden therein. I have been saying for a while, quite a long while, that there is stuff there in the Hebrew scriptures that doesn't rep- doesn't feel like love. There must be something more going on here. And so I'm excited because I believe there is something more going on here. And I think the key to this is Jesus. Jesus is God. That's the key tenant of our faith. And so what if we start filtering everything that we hear and read and see and understand of God through the lens of Jesus. Jesus is God. We say it, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, they're all God. So if you're reading something like that, doesn't sound like Jesus. And the classic example of that, which I was hearing about literally this morning, um, is Sodom and Gomorrah, where uh, you know God is, is pertained to have rained down fire versus Jesus when I think it was James and John, they the, the sons of thunder. I didn't know they were called that until until thanks to the chosen. But the sons the sons of thunder, the sons of thunder, they said to there was a there was a town, I think it was Samaria, there was a town that didn't um accept Jesus. And he said, Right, shall we rain down thunder? And Jesus said, No, that's not how we do things. You don't know what spirit that you are of. Meaning you know, if you do that, you're going to be doing that through the power of another spirit that's not of me, i.e. not of God, which feels like it's rewriting the script on what happened in Sodom and Gomorrah. This is a bigger conversation for another day, and I didn't exactly know we were going to be going through here exactly today. What I really wanted to encourage you with is and 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 leave with you is that reminder or that suggestion that actually our understanding and, and our ability to receive God's love is getting better and better and as such we are part of a kingdom that will never end a kingdom founded on God's love and so any anything you hear that tells you or suggests to you that oh no it's getting worse and worse we reject that in the name of Jesus because we are told quite clearly that it is it is a kingdom established in the time of those two kings which was you know the Jewish and the Roman time when Jesus came. It is a kingdom that will never end. It is a kingdom that will grow and expand to fill the whole earth. That's what it says in Daniel. And so I want to pray for you and I just want to encourage you, your plaything with this is to ask God what he's saying to you through this. What does he want you to know afresh today about his love, how he's revealing himself to you through Jesus? Jesus is key absolutely key. What are we told? Fix our eyes on Jesus. Fix your eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of your faith. Jesus is key in this. So let's fix our eyes on Jesus and let's go, okay, God, what are you saying? What's going on here? Help me to understand you more. Help me to understand your heart more, how you really want to be known by me. And not just me. This is not just about you and I. This is about the wider world. There are people in your life who do not love Jesus, who are rejecting God because of maybe some of the the messaging that they've grown up with messaging that quite transparently is only about 200 years old. It's a relatively small way of approaching the scriptures. That's all I'm going to say on that. I don't know if we're going to be doing this more in the podcast. It's absolutely something I want us to explore inside the blue house as we move forward in in 2023. I'm excited. Uh, With that reminder, actually, uh, if you're not a member of the blue house, you can absolutely are welcome to come and join us. Yubia.com forward slash join. A, A timely announcement. We do have this coming Tuesday, the 13th of December, uh, our spiritual director, Donna, she's leading us through the Life Compass practice. It's an opportunity to explore with God 
where you where you where you where you've come from, where you're headed, what lights you up, who's going to be encouraging you in this journey, taking uh, stock of, of of everything, these different areas of our life, uh, but doing it in a way that allows you to be you. I'm excited about it. I f- feel it's going to be a way to to end the year well and prepare for what's next. Uh, so you know, if you'd like to come and join us, please do. Like I said to folks who get the daily love notes, uh, if you would just want to join us for the month and and do the, the life compass uh, and celebrate Christmas with us absolutely fine there's no minimum contract i'd love you to stick around while we do everything else that we're going to be doing in 2023 i make no apology for that but you you don't have to like not join now and forever hold your peace (laughs) join for for as long as, as you need to be there anyway let me pray for you oh god i just thank you so much that we are at this point in history we are alive right now today for such a time as this and we get to experience your love in this way we get to know your love and maybe ways that we've not known it before and so right now in jesus name we break agreement with any lie that actually things are getting worse and worse and instead we welcome you king jesus we say that you are on the throne that the kingdom your kingdom that is established in love is growing is expanding and just help us to fix our eyes on you jesus the author and perfecter and finisher of our faith Help us when we read things that do not sound and feel like Jesus to ask you, what's going on here? What's your heart here? What? How do you want me to understand this? Because we know that you are love. We thank you that you are love. Thank you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit for everything that you are. Lead us on now for the rest of today, into the rest of this week, and into this Advent season when we celebrate Jesus coming, God with us, Emmanuel. We thank you for the gift of Jesus. Lead us on in Jesus' name I ask this. Amen. Amen. Thank you, thank you for being here with me today, for allowing me to share this episode. It is the final episode for this week. We don't have an episode tomorrow. We no- we do normally have episodes on Friday, uh, but we don't have one tomorrow. Quite transparently, because I'm having my UEA Christmas do. I work from home. It's me and God in my office. So my wonderful husband has taken the day off uh, and he's taking me out for lunch. That's a little behind the scenes that you didn't know was happening. Um, the kids don't have school tomorrow, but they're not invited apparently. So, <laughs> but it's all good. Um, they get to do lots of other wonderful stuff instead. It's okay. And I should clarify for anybody who's like, oh, you're leaving your children home alone. My children are 15, 17 and 19. Uh, that it, it's okay. It's not, not safe. I would like to think that you would assume that would be the case, but just in case anyone's like, oh, Elle's leaving her children home alone (laughs) it's okay (laughs) you don't need to worry they're quite safe and well so we'll be back on monday with the next episode if you know somebody who would benefit from this reminder maybe you know somebody who is struggling and has been hearing how terrible things are getting share this with them by way of encouragement because god's love is expanding well actually no his love is his love doesn't ever change his love has always been our understanding that's important thank you holy spirit our understanding of his love is expanding and growing and we get to walk that out and I'm excited. Anyway, I'm not going to start, otherwise I'll start off on a whole other conversation. We'll be back on Monday with the next episode. Thank you as always for being here and for for following along with me. I'll catch up with you very soon. Take care. Bye-bye.